Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about John Fetterman and the campaign trail, and the fact that his wife said in an interview today that he may not return to the campaign trail until July, in just three weeks time from now, which is a pretty substantial period of time for a very hotly contested U.S. Senate race that could ultimately determine the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. John Fetterman, the incumbent lieutenant governor of the state of Pennsylvania, recently won the Democratic nomination for U.S. Senate back on May 17th, and he didn't exactly win by a narrow amount. He won in the primary by exactly how the polls projected, at a 33-point margin of victory against Representative Connor Lamb and, I believe, State Senator Malcolm Kenyatta. I'm not entirely sure if he is a state senator, but I do believe that he is. And in that very deafening defeat for Connor Lamb and other candidates in this primary, John Fetterman was elevated to a position of uh, extreme power and significance for the Democratic Party. And that's because Pennsylvania is long seen, has been long seen as the only real pickup opportunity for the Democrats in the 2022 U.S. Senate races. If you take a look at our national map, the numbers don't necessarily look good for the Democrats, especially in what many people are expecting to be a red wave year. Taking a look at where this U.S. Senate map is right now, the Democrats do have an opportunity to hold on to many of their races in New Hampshire, Georgia, Colorado, Arizona, and Nevada. But in terms of expansiveness, in terms of outward and upward mobility for the Democratic Party, they don't really have that many opportunities. The state of Florida is locked down by Senator Marco Rubio. The state of Iowa is locked down by Senator Chuck Grassley. The state of Missouri is more than likely locked down. The state of Ohio is more than likely locked down. And when you look across the map, you really only find yourself in a position where you have three main competitive races for the Republican Party. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. Now, unfortunately for the Democratic Party, North Carolina has been really circling around a seven to eight point race in the favorite for Representative Ted Budd. Now, I personally do not believe that it will be that large of a victory. Even 2016 only brought a six point victory to incumbent Senator Richard Burr, and the emphasis is on the incumbent status because in congressional races, 90% of the time, the incumbents win re-election. And that just makes sense because people vote for the status quo. People like maintaining who they have. And a lot of that does come down to gerrymandering, but in terms of a primary in the first place, well, that incumbency status matters a lot. In the state of North Carolina, I think the Republican Party is definitely going to win there, at least as it stands right now. The other state, Wisconsin, Senator Ron Johnson is running for re-election, which means he also has that benefit of the incumbency. And he's also been lucky enough that he's been positioned in three very good years, 2010, 2016, and 2022. It seems anytime Ron Johnson is running, or anytime this class of the Senate seats are up, that it is a red wave year, at least to some extent. Looking at the state of Wisconsin right now, definitely will be competitive, but I think Ron Johnson is the favorite to win. As for the state of Pennsylvania, on the other hand, I would have said that the Democrats are the favorites to win in Pennsylvania and did say so about a week ago. Looking at this new revelation from John Fetterman's wife, I would have to reevaluate. Now, I don't think that that is going to dramatically change the outcome of the race. I think if the Republicans were destined to win, they will win. If the Democrats are destined to win, they will also win. But this could be such a close race that that could be wrong, too. That idea that we have this predetermined is also probably wrong. I think the state of Pennsylvania definitely has swung back and forth multiple times. And that's exactly what we see in terms of pundit forecasts or even the political forecasts from the political betting markets. Take a look at this trend over the last 30 days, not 90 days, because there was a much more significant Republican lead two, three months ago. But over the past 30 days, what you find is that this has really been fluctuating. On one hand, the Republicans are up. On the other hand, the Democrats are up. And now the Republicans are up. It goes back and forth, and both of which are within about two percentage of each other in terms of translating this to a percentage chance victory. Now, it doesn't help that the Republican Party had a primary that still some people believe actually, this is the wrong article, that some people believe are not really finalized. Uh, the Republican frontrunner, Dave McCormick, he ran in the U.S. Senate race here. He has officially conceded to Dr. Oz, but the recount hasn't finalized in the Pennsylvania primary. 
Now, the margin of victory for Oz in this race is 0.07%. It was a margin of 1,000 votes in a race that had 1.34 million cast. It was an exceptionally close margin, and the Democrats knew that that would benefit them, and benefit them for good reason, because it would draw on a primary that occurred on May 17th when John Fetterman won that evening, and it allowed the Democratic Party to do messaging across the airwaves, attacking both of these candidates while these two Republicans were fighting against each other, hiring lawyers, and playing out a legal battle that never really needed to occur, because the winner on May 17th or May 18th is the same winner right now, and that is Dr. Oz. But then came a curveball. Then came the curveball that Dr. Uh, that John Fetterman had a stroke on Election Day on May 17th. And even until now, John Fetterman has still not hit the campaign trail. And to see this new thing from his wife, that he may not be on the campaign trail into July, will completely diminish any benefit the Democratic Party had from the Republican Party in fighting and this continuation of a primary. Because for what the general election season has seen, only the Republicans seem to have pivoted towards the general election beyond campaign ads. The Democrats have done well in terms of messaging. They have at least tried to ensure more division within the Republican primary, within the Republican Party, making it so Dr. Oz isn't viewed as the most legitimate candidate or that Dr. Oz isn't viewed as a genuine candidate. But what John Fetterman could have been doing had he not had a stroke was be on the campaign trail in numerous counties across the state. He could have hit a different county every single day, maybe two within the same day, held campaign rally after campaign rally, fundraiser after fundraiser. Yet he has not been for three weeks. And obviously, he is in a position where he just had a life-changing event occur to him. This, a life-threatening event. This is not something to be taken lightly. But the unfortunate reality for the Democratic Party is that the election proceeds. The election moves on. John Fetterman, I can imagine, will be on the campaign trail in a month from now. I think his wife's estimate is correct, but it isn't a good one for the Democratic Party. And I'm not saying that John Fetterman should be trying to prioritize an election over his health. But what I am going to say is that there are significant drawbacks of having potentially the top Democratic nominee across the United States, and not in terms of electability or candidate quality, but the top Democratic nominee because he is the most important. A lot of the other races are predetermined. The majority of our Senate races are predetermined. Only about 8 to 10 of them are truly going to be decided by some level of competitive margins. But beyond that, Pennsylvania is really where our eyes are set. Because this is such a close race. This could determine whether the Republicans or the Democrats are in power, and the Democrats are going to be out of commission for a month and a half. Dr. Oz, on the other hand, has already turned towards the general election. Dr. Oz, on the other hand, knows this benefits him. And so does the Republican Party. The Republican Party was also the party, might I remind you, that back in the 2016 presidential election and the 2020 presidential election played up all of these ideas that Clinton and Biden would be unfit for office based off their health. They continuously put out ads attacking them for coughing during a speech or passing out on a hot summer's day. Things of that characterization were only exemplified by the Republican Party. And now they have something concrete to work with. They have a letter from the doctor that says Fetterman hadn't been to him in five years, despite having an initial diagnosis that likely could have prevented this stroke. They have concrete information showing that John Fetterman indeed had a stroke, that he was in the hospital. This is going to play very well into a strategy book and a strategy play that the Republican Party has effectively used before. They are going to use this against Fetterman, and I'm telling you right now, it will be effective. Now, the good news is, or also the bad news is, for the Democrats, is that we don't have much data at this point in time. Had there been a lot of data before this, uh, the, before John Fetterman had a stroke, before primary day, showing that Fetterman had a deafening lead over the Republicans in the general election or a substantial lead, this might have made Republicans more anxious. It might have put them in a position where they thought, we might lose this thing, so now we need to go extremely on the offensive. Right now, a lack of data doesn't help or hurt the Democratic Party. Had there been substantial leads prior to, it honestly might have hurt them. 
polling data only gives you an idea and an understanding of where the race is right now. And as of right now, we have no data from the past six months in this U.S. Senate race. The last poll was a Fetterman-sponsored poll between December 3rd and December 5th of 2021. Now, I get it. A lot of these polling companies have been really focused on the primary elections, polling the Democratic primary, polling the Republican primary. If you take a look at the past six months, you find over 20 polls on the Republican side. You take a look at the past six months, you find over you know, five, six polls, you find, you know, nearly 10 polls in the past six months for the Democratic primary, but the general election, silent. I am excited to see more data to come out of the state of Pennsylvania because it could give us a better understanding as to where we are right now. Where do voters see themselves voting in this general election this November? We've had an absence of data. It's time to see more of this come out, but we also might not get a perfect depiction of this Pennsylvania race until both candidates can be effectively on the campaign trail. But I don't need to continue talking about my wish for more data. My point about this is that I don't see the Republican Party going as hard as they could be about this health issue, but I also don't want to underestimate them. I do want to say that I expect the Republican Party to continue a line of messaging that circles around questioning whether or not John Fetterman can serve out a full term. It's the same playbook that we've seen, and both parties have employed it. But in terms of the parties that have more recently done it, and especially more effectively done it, it has been the GOP. The campaign trail also just simply cannot be left untouched by the Democratic Party. If it isn't John Fetterman, it needs to be somebody else. It needs to be the popular governor, Tom Wolf. It needs to be the popular senator, Bob Casey. Take a look at their elections. Let's head over to the U.S. Senate elections from 2018. Take a look at that Pennsylvania margin of victory. I get it was a blue wave year, but a 13-point margin of victory for a Democratic senator in a state that voted for Trump by a point a year, a two years prior, isn't exactly something that can be explained by simply a blue wave year. You go back to 2012. What do you find? Well, Bob Casey won by about nine points similar to Obama's margin of victory, but larger, for sure, than Obama's margin of victory. You go back to 2006, Rick Santorum was defeated by Bob Casey. But this could possibly be explained by a blue wave year, but also Bob Casey has some name recognition. My point being that I do think that Casey should end up on the campaign trail for John Fetterman. I also think that you should see Governor Tom Wolf. He's not running for re-election. He's not focused on the general besides Josh Shapiro and Fetterman's race. So put him out there. Put out all of the Democrats who ran. Put out Kenyatta. Put out Lamb. Put out everyone you can. Because right now, Oz is just running across the campaign stage. He's getting endorsements. He's getting ads. Uh, he's uh, you know getting money. He's fundraising. He's doing whatever he can to win. Because the only thing stopping him between the U.S. Senate and just going back into television irrelevancy is, and I, I'm not saying that to knock him. I'm saying that because Oz really isn't as much of a mainstream name now as he was obviously 10 years ago. But the only thing stopping him between the U.S. Senate and practically living the life that he's living right now is John Fetterman. And the Democrats realize the only thing stopping them from gutting the filibuster or doing a lot of the initiatives that they want that rely on the U.S. Senate and rely on control for the Democratic Party is Joe Manchin. And a lot of that could be walked back with a Fetterman victory. Cinema is another battle, but she's a lot more swayable than Manchin would be, especially when Manchin's likely going to be running for re-election in a state that voted 40 points for Trump when Arizona voted for Biden, right? So the argument can be made to Cinema. It can't easily be made to Manchin. Manchin also is the name that is continuously brought back up in the U.S. Senate. Continuously. Cinema to a similar extent, but not as much as Manchin. That one vote could be completely invalidated, that one vote from Manchin, by a John Fetterman victory. There is so much riding on the line for this, uh, for both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Having an obstructionist U.S. Senate could be possible through Dr. Oz. The Democrats, on the other hand, could have progress through John Fetterman. It's a very difficult situation for them now that they find that their star candidate can't make it onto the campaign trail into July. Now, Fetterman's wife also seems to cast some doubt on the possibility that he might not even be there by July. 
She says in the question about whether or not he would be there, she says, maybe. I think so. That's my hope. She does say that the doctors expect him to make a full recovery, but understand a full recovery for a stroke doesn't just happen overnight. It happens over a process of months and months. You go to therapy, you go to, you know, remission, you go to all of these things that are meant to help you after such a significant toll on your body. And John Fetterman is expected to elevate himself into one of the most extremely stressful positions possible, campaigning, especially when his race isn't exactly a low-level, you know, inconsequential state house race, state senate race, or even house of representatives race. Everything that matters beyond this point is going to determine whether or not Democrats can push forth with their initiatives and whether or not Democrats can be successful beyond the midterms. Because what we saw with Obama is that once the Republican Party got control of one or potentially two chambers, it became impossible to do anything. And that's the exact problem that Biden th faces at this point in time. So Fetterman also has that on the line. There is, again, just so much that needs to be considered, so much that is impacting this race, and Fetterman won't be on the campaign trail for likely a month and a half after he has won that nomination, which makes him less electable and less known across the state, and ultimately puts him in a position where Democrats are going to be upset about potentially the outcome of this race, and it could be a result of this uh, complication. So we will see what happens. I don't know if the Democrats are going to roll out an A-list strategy where they get all of the top Democrats in Pennsylvania. I'm, you know, for the sake of their campaign, I do think that they might. I think that they might realize that they can't just allow it to be TV ads, online ads, and press releases, that they need to do a lot more. They will get that bump from Josh Shapiro, who will probably win the governor's election this November, just simply because the GOP does not have the right candidate, and Josh Shapiro is the right candidate also for the Democratic Party, but there's also no guarantee on that side as well. So, Fetterman is out of the campaign trail for the time being, for the foreseeable future, and we will see as more comes out from his campaign, and we get a better update and idea and understanding as to where he is health-wise and where he is campaign-wise. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.